Hi everyone, this is Tom Cherry Holmes with another video in the Retro Computing Archaeology series. This series of videos aims to cover a wide variety of obscure retro computing subjects. And in today's video, we're actually going to be discussing the Atari Music Composer. The Atari Music Composer was released in 1979 as one of the launch titles for the Atari 400 and 800 personal computer systems. And it was written by Brad Stewart, who had previously done Breakout for the Atari 2600, as well as a number of other system-based software for the, uh, for the Atari 8-bit system, such as Load and Go. The cartridge itself is approximately 8 kilobytes, so uh, it's not only a, an early launch title, it's also a rather small launch title. It came on cartridge as you can see on the lower right hand corner here. In this particular video, the goal here is to take a copy of Bach's Invention number no. 8 in F minor and to bring it into Music Composer so that it can play it. And you'll see that because Music Composer itself is arranged out rather, rather well, this becomes is a very straightforward process. So with that, let's get started. If you look in the link to the video, you'll find a number of links, one of them being the manual uh, for the Music Composer, as well as a link to the ROM image so that you can follow along if you'd like. I'm also using FujiNet here to provide all of my storage needs like I do in other videos. Music Composer itself, of course, came on cartridge, came with this manual here, and the manual is very straightforward. Uh, it basically shows you how to use the program uh, with placing uh, very much emphasis on its menu system here and how to take an enter in notation and whatnot. And this will come in handy uh, as we take and start doing the process of entering in notes and navigating around uh, the staves, etc. But before we do that, we actually need to set a couple of things up here. And I have uh, in drive one here, a copy of Atari DOS 2.0 and a blank disc that hasn't been formatted yet uh, to hold our music. So let's go ahead and we'll boot in. I've inserted the cartridge and we're just gonna boot in. The nice thing here is that the uh, cartridge is uh, a well-behaved cartridge. It allows the disk operating system to boot precisely so that we can save our compositions onto disk. If we didn't have disk, we could also save them onto cassette or other storage devices, such as the FujiNet network device. But that's for another video. We'll go ahead and we need to go into DOS real quick. So we'll uh, select the D option here in the menu. You'll notice that all the menu options are listed top to bottom here with the typable letter being uh, the one in blue. And we boot our copy of DOS and we'll go ahead. We have our utilities here for FujiNet. We're not going to use them. We're just going to take and format a disk in drive two. And we're going to write system files to it. Now that we're done, I will go ahead and quickly reboot the system here so we can do a little swap. And we will put our invention disk in as our bootable disk just so we can have something to start from. I have it stored here on my local file server. Select it, mount it, read write. And we'll go ahead and boot. I accidentally hit the debugger. <laughs> Turn that off there. And with that, we have now booted into our boot disk, which gives us our DOS, and it drops us into the Music Composer cartridge. 
You'll notice that we have right here in the main menu all of the main features to take and load and save our compositions, as well as the ability to take and edit the music and arrange it. So the general workflow is that we would start with edit, we enter in our musical phrases, and then we use the arrange menu to basically take and put those phrases into a workable song. Then we can take and save our composition and retrieve it later. And once we've loaded our uh, composition in or have it in memory, we can L to listen. So let's get started. We go ahead and hit E to edit. And we have here a set of parameters that will specify how we want our music to be structured. For reference here, since we are going to be transcribing a copy of Invention 8 in F minor, we have it over here in another window so that we can have a look at it. And what we can see almost immediately here is that according to the time signature here, this is in 3-4 time. That means that there are three major beats every measure, and the quarter note gets the beat, that's the four. And there is a single flat here in the key signature which puts this squarely in B flat. So to enter that in, all we really need to do, first we need to set the meter, and the meter uh, needs to be 3-4. Just like that, okay? Now we need to take and set key signature. Right now it's set to no sharps or flats whatsoever. We want to set this to a single flat, 1F. Boop. That sets us B flat. And we'll leave the tempo as it is, because as it turns out, the default tempo is right about what we need to be. You can put any value here from 1 to 9, uh, with lower values being faster. We also absolutely want to, since we're transcribing this in and we want to make sure that everything is correct, we can turn on check measures, which will tell us after we've edited uh, a particular measure, whether that measure is too long or too short. Okay. Now, with that, we can finally go to Phrase to select the phrase that we want to edit. Since this is the first, since to talk a little bit about how we're going to take and divide this up here, uh, you'll see that there are two staves right here, primarily bass, uh, tra primarily treble uh, clef here and bass clef here, although it does switch down here, as you can see, uh, sometimes between back and forth on the lower stave here. There are reasons for that, and we can deal and we can deal with that just fine here in the transcription. It's not that big of a deal at all. But we need to go ahead and, and say that our first phrase will be everything here on the top, and our second phrase will be everything here on the bottom, with an interesting exception at the very end of the piece where we have a single chord to play. So with that, let's go ahead and start entering in our first phrase. We enter phrase number one, and of course it's asking us if we want to go ahead and erase this phrase. Sure, why not? We are now presented with the Music Composer display here. You'll see that we have our two staves here. Uh, we have uh, the treble clef and the bass clef here. We have our single flat and denoting B flat in both of our, uh, both of our staves here. And we have our time signature of 3-4 right here, ready to go. And we have uh, we have some background colors here to make the display look more pleasing. I really like the design decisions that they did here. They were really trying to show that the Atari computer was a very colorful and very graphical computer. And it really succeeded here, especially uh, compared to the competition. One thing that does stand out here, you'll see this black bar behind everything. It looks like it's kind of behind everything. And this is actually our cursor to let us know where the next note is going to be placed. We can also see some status information down here below where we can see the current phrase we're on, phrase number one, the current measure we're on, measure number one, how many bytes of in memory that we currently have free, just shy of 16 kilobytes free that we can take and enter in our music information, 
and we have uh, some slight reminders of some keys that we can use to add additional features to our notes, such as whether or not we do, uh, whether the note the notes have ties, whether or not there's a dotted note of any type, there won't be any of those here in this piece, uh, whether or not we want to use legato, et cetera, et cetera, as well as some of the other keys here, such as S to stop, M to set the measure, et cetera. But it's also asking us, or it's asking us for a note here, and anything that we type is actually going to go right here. So we start with our first note here. And our first note, uh, is a uh, treble clef F. So we go ahead and put that in here. Oop. And it's letting us know, well, we need an octave here. Okay. So we have six octaves that we can work with, numbered one through six. And they stop at the from the bottom of the, from the bottom clef here, all the way up to the top. Six octaves that we can work with. And the six octave limitation is more to do with how the pokey chip works in the first place. This particular music composer program was written before certain programmers found other ways to get lower notes using other uh, pokey register tricks and whatnot. So uh, six, oct six, oct six octave limitation. Just the way it just the way it works. So we start okay again. We have an F here, it's an eighth note. And we know here, I know from doing this before, that this starts in the fourth octave here, and it's an eighth note. Now we can see that it's placed that particular note. Now we can do the next note. And the next note is an A. And you can see, as I type each one, it's taking and playing the phrase up to that point each time. Finally, the, the C here. Now, since the C here goes up an octave, we have to also go up an octave here. And so there's our first measure of the first phrase right here. And actually, we've made a bit of a mistake. So, because we didn't put the rest at the first here. So what we can actually do is delete these particular notes using the delete key, and we can go again. And we need to start with rest. Rests begin with an R and the length of the rest. This is an eighth note rest. So rest eighth notes. And there's our eighth note rest. So we can do this again. And there's our first measure right there, ready to go. And we can immediately take and go to the next measure using the M command. Now you can see that the, uh, the staves have been cleared off. We're still in the first phrase, but you can see measure now reads two. And we can continue. And we need to, next note we need to do, this is an F5E, since it's an eighth note. And now we have a 16th note. Since this is a 16th note, it's not E, but S for 16th note. And And since we go back down an octave, we have to make sure, because if I do B5S here, watch what happens. That's wrong. So let's go ahead, delete that note, and go again. Let's see. 
Oh, do that again. Sorry, I'm thinking too far ahead. And D5S. Uh, let me do that again. Pardon me for a second. And it's me talking while I'm doing this here, so I made a mistake, so I'll just do a delete here. Okay. Now we have the B4S. And finally, G4S for the end of this measure here. And we can go to mix measure. And more eighth notes. And you can see, I'm just kind of tearing through this as quickly as I can. Boom. And we're making good time of it here. Uh, now we actually see some a, a run of bouncy 16th notes here. And you can see these are really high up on the stave here. They bounce off a little bit. And these are high A's and high C's. Just bounce, 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 bounce. High A, high C, B, high B, high C. <laughs> there. And so on. So let's go ahead and get those entered. See? And this is up an octave six. So we're right at the edge of what can be done here. Good thing we have this map. Uh, this, this fits quite well inside of... Uh, And again, since this is set up in phrases of 3-4 here, we, this happens three times. Okay. Okay, five. I can tell I've been doing this all day. And you can see right here, with the note that no longer can fit on the other page here, it takes and wraps over to the next page. And there, with measure four done here. And I will take and finish out this particular page here and then cut once I've finished the first phrase, okay? So we don't put this video too long, okay? measure so that's that right there and then it bounces down it shifts down just a little bit
And there we go. So, and that's measure five. And you can see, depending on the notes and the combinations that you put on the staff here, uh, sometimes it'll fit nicely on one page, sometimes it will wrap over onto other pages here. But regardless of what happens, you still have to be aware of uh, measure constraints. So now we're done with that measure, go to the next measure here, and we're on the last measure of this page. And you can see right there, there's there's our first page of the of the piece so far. We can actually go ahead and stop right here. Hit the S key to stop, and we can hit stop again. And we can go very quickly into arrange music real quick because I want to show you uh, how this is set up by default. And we can say we want to say voice number one. And we can have a little look here. Okay, it shows us the, what's possible here in the Arrange menu, but it doesn't give us the ability to set it here because it's going to show us the arrangement here. And you can see right here that we have 20 possible steps in which we can put different commands to do things like display, uh, display the current phrase, uh, and display the current voice on screen, and play a particular phrase. And in this case, we're already set up to, set, to play phrase one by default. If we go ahead and hit S, we go all the way back to the main menu and we can listen to see where we are so far. So you can see so far. All right, I'm going to cut here and I'm going to uh, and I'm going to actually finish putting in the phrase for uh, put it, putting in the rest of the phrases for the measures for this particular phrase here and then we'll come back so that I can continue so we can keep track here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in edit music and I'm going to edit phrase and I'm going to go back into phrase number one and I'm no I do not want to erase this time but I want to start at measure number six and you can see that's where we started right there. Everything looks good so far, so we can go ahead and press M to go on to the next measure and continue our transcription in exactly the same way. And actually, I do want to show you something here. Starting on measure seven, you'll start to see some rather interesting things happen here. Uh, one of those things actually is that uh, you'll start to see the usage of naturals to override our flats, for example, and uh, the reassertion of those flats so that you can see how to take and enter those. And in fact, the very first note we actually need to enter, since this is in the key of B flat here, we need to take and enter in a B natural. To do that, all we really need to do is enter our note and Instead of entering in the duration, we need to also enter in an N for natural here. Then we can enter in our duration. This is of course a uh, this is of course an eighth note in octave number uh, an octave number four, B N four E. And you can see right there, bam, it matches our transcription exactly here. So Music Composer actually has everything you need to be able to take and do things like uh, change key signatures, override them with naturals and sharps, etc., etc. 
So if you needed, wanted to enter in a B sharp, you would take and use B S four E, B natural, B N four E, B flat, B F four E, if you wanted to overwrite it at any given time. And of course, because Music Composer does respect key signatures, if you take and override with a natural here, it will keep that until the end of the measure. So the next time that that note comes up, you can enter in B4E and it will use the B natural here for the rest of this measure. So let's go ahead, I'll take and continue to enter in. You'll see right here, uh, and this next note is a G. D4 and D5E. And notice that I didn't do a BN4E this time, but if I do a B4E this time, it keeps it in exactly the same time, the same key signature here because we overrode it with the natural. It works just fine. And you can see I made a mistake there, use the wrong octave, no problem. Just change it. And then we continue on with the next measure. Now notice right here in the middle of measure eight, you'll see that the transcription takes and flips us back to a B flat here. But because this is a new measure here and we've already enforced this through the key signature here, we don't have to actually explicitly enter it that way. We could if we wanted to, but we really don't have to. So you can see. Once again, here in measure number nine, we have a natural right here that we need to deal with, B and for us. And we continue on. At any given time, if we want to take and go back to any measure that we want to, we can use M to go forward and it will go to the next measure. But if we specify a measure number, it will immediately go to that measure and play it. And again, here in measure number 11, we have another natural here at the very end, a B natural, an eighth note. The next measure, measure 12, has a single quarter note here. Uh, that's a C, five, Q. And we need to take and make sure that we put in two quarter rests, so. On to the next measure. If you're doing your own transcription, always make sure that you catch everything. Uh, this includes ties, it includes staccato notes, any tied or dotted notes that may be present. Thankfully, we don't have any dotted notes, we don't have any ties that we need to deal with, uh, but we need to make sure that we put in our appropriate rests in certain measures, such as the beginning of measure 13 here. Moving on. You can see right here in measure number 14 that we are bouncing way up in the topmost octave here to get some of these notes. Uh, recall that on your treble clef here, uh, E, G, B, D, F, A, and then C. C, B, A, G, and so on. Let's go ahead and get that first one in. So that's an A. That's an A6E. That's an A6E. Uh, Make note, there's only a single bar here, so it's an eighth note. An A5E, sorry. And you can see, oops, didn't quite. So let's see, 6E, sorry. 
I was, I got mine mixed up here. So, and you can see there it is right there. B5S. And you can see, oop, that's the wrong note here. So we need to make sure that that's a BN5S. A5S. And so on. Moving onward. And you can see, even though the transcription doesn't match exactly what's here on the manuscript right here, uh, Music Composer does, it, it, it will play correctly here, as long as you enter in the correct notes. And you can see, rather interesting little bug right there. We, can't, we hit a point where it wants to take and render this particular note on the next page, but it doesn't for some reason. But the note is actually there just fine. If we take and uh, go to the next measure, everything is okay, and we continue on. We see right here in measure number 17, our first uh, flat that's not part of the key signature. Again, entering it in, we just need to take and enter in an E flat 5 that is indeed a 16th note. So you can see right there. Continuing on. We go ahead, enter it in. And since we've overridden this particular note with a flat, if we use the E again, and we move on. We'll go ahead and for completeness finish this particular measure. And we see. Starting on measure 19, we have a sharp right here and the C sharp, which we need to take a deal with, but we also need our G5. Mm, actually, sorry, that's not, that is not a G, but a B. Take and delete that. And C sharp. I, uh, C sharp five E, and you can see yeah, so Sorry. it's been a long day. Apologies. B five E B five E. On to the next measure. Here in measure 22, we have a uh, natural here, followed immediately uh, once we bounce off of this note here to a C sharp here that we need to take and deal with. No problem. B in for S. And and C sharp C sharp four, C sharp five S. You can see right there. You can see the difference if we take and do just a C five S here. You'll see the difference. Not right. So C in 5S. Nope, did I type that wrong? <laughs> C in 5S. Hmm, okay, seems like I've hit a bug in the software here. Hold on just a second. Or no, I'm just being an idiot, sorry. Not a C natural, but a C sharp 5S. So you can see right there. 
continuing on. And again, because we've already set a uh, B natural here, if I use the B again, it will use it here too. And so on. Here at the end of measure 25, we have the reappearance of the E flat again. E flat five and shifting over as needed. And again, if you'll notice right here in measure 25, since we have this E flat here, the next time that I, uh, this F, uh, this E flat right here, the next time I use it, we will see it actually be uh, used here. Finally, to complete the very last phrase of the, uh, the very last measure of the very first phrase, we have a quarter note. That's an F in octave four. That's a quarter note. Followed by two quarter rests. And that ends the first phrase. You can go ahead and hit S to stop. And we can immediately go to listen to our work by stopping here and pressing L to listen. There's the end of the first phrase, and now we can actually start working on the next piece, which is the second phrase, the bottom staff here. And we can start entering in those notes. Again, we press E to edit. We select P to phrase, phrase number two. We don't want to erase. And we want to start at measure number one. And we continue the process, this time taking and putting in the first thing for the first measure, you can see that there's a whole rest right here. So we do a RW and that puts in our whole rest right there. Continue on to the next measure and we start entering in a uh, an eighth note rest to start. And then we start entering in the notes for the second part of the phrase here. F. F3. And we can see right here, if we go ahead and stop, and listen, we can already see that these will start to play together. And so on. I'll just scoot past this. Pardon me. So we'll go ahead, go back in, edit, phrase, two, 
taken care of not to erase it this time, and we start on measure number two, which is where we started. Okay, next measure, and we continue on with the transcription process. Since I already showed the same techniques that I used to enter the first phrase, I won't repeat them here again. So I will come back here once the entire second phrase has been entered so we can deal with the very last measure. Finally, we've gone back all the way and we've entered in all the data for phrase two down at the bottom here. And the only thing left is this measure right here. Now, because of limitations in the pokey, some notes had to be uh, had to be left out because anything pretty much below this line here cannot be played by the pokey in its default uh, pure tone method here. There's just not enough frequency dividers to make that happen. So instead of trying to substitute notes, I just inserted 16th rests where those were or 8th rests as needed. Now that leaves us with this final bit here. Now. In order to do these other two notes right here, I'm going to use the remaining two voices because we have the first, the first voice allocated to the first phrase, the second voice allocated to the second phrase. We're now going to use voices three and four to do these last two notes right here. And since these two notes are together here on the same bar, this is essentially a chord. So uh, we will start with, uh, putting in the note here. So here on measure 34, we have a quarter note that is, okay, let's see. So that's F, E, C, and A. So that's C, four, Q, followed by two whole rests. <clears throat> Oops, sorry. That's a mistake. Excuse me. It's been a very long day. So RQ, RQ, to fill out the measure there, and we stop right there, and we do phrase number four. Erase, sure, it doesn't exist yet, and we literally enter in, since there's nothing else for this to play for 33 measures, it's 33 measures of whole rests. So, rest whole me uh, me measure. and so on until we get all the way to measure number 34. And we end with the other part of the note, which is an A3Q. And RQ, RQ. And we're done. Stop. Stop. It didn't complain about measures being out of alignment, so we're good to go. And now we can listen to the final product by using the listen command. Now, actually, I want to take one small thing here. If we take a look and do a range and we look at the different voice numbers, we'll see why we did this in the first place. If we look at the arrangement for voice number one, we can see it's going to display the for the first voice as what's going to show up on screen while the other voices are playing in the background while we play phrase one. And the composition ends at this point. But let's look at voice number two. We play for phrase number two. Voice number three plays, plays phrase number three. Voice number four plays phrase number four, so on. So now we can take and listen to the result.
And there we are. That's our finished composition. We can finally take and save this to disk. And we can say that we want to save a file name, starting with D colon here, uh, to save it to the disk drive. And we want to say, call it iNo8.mus. And we want to save everything by selecting E here. And there we go. There's our composition saved and ready to go. We can stop at this point. And there we go. There's a full demonstration of the Atari Music Composer in context. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little demonstration here. And uh, as always, have fun.